One of the things we'd like to be able to do with human embryonic stem cells is turn them into specialized cell types to either make a heart cell to treat heart disease, to make a brain cell to treat Huntington's disease or other neurodegenerative disorders, or to make a cell that makes insulin uh, and maybe helps someone with diabetes. But in order to make a lot of different cell types, you need a lot of knowledge about uh, what factors normally control the growth and differentiation of those cell types. The work that we're doing in my laboratory that is funded by CERM is to understand how particular proteins provided by the feeder cells that support the growth of stem cells, how those proteins actually act on the stem cell and what they do. And several years ago, we described a particular family of um, growth factors or proteins that bind to the surface of stem cells and they stimulate the stem cells to stay alive and stay healthy. And so what we're doing in this grant is to try and understand how that protein, when it binds to the surface of the stem cell, really keeps it happy. And one of the things we think it does is it prevents the stem cell from becoming genetically abnormal. In other words, it prevents it from doing what uh, human cancer cells do, which is they lose or gain chromosomes. So if we grow the cells in that protein, um, they remain normal, and that's a great benefit in terms of expanding the cells and ultimately in terms of cell transplantation. But there's still a lot to be understood about what makes a stem cell tick. And so the other things we're trying to do is to identify other factors that really stimulate the growth of the stem cell and keep it normal. That's going to be really important for industrial-scale production of stem cells, but ultimately in understanding how to turn stem cells into the specialized cell types that might be used to treat human disease. Typically, when we're growing embryonic stem cells, we would get um, some frozen cells out of the freezer. They can be stored indefinitely in liquid nitrogen. We take them out of the freezer, thaw them very quickly, and then put them into culture in two types of conditions either on the animal feeder cells that provide them with nutrients or on uh, a plastic substrate onto which we put some of the proteins that we, that we think that the feeder cells make and then put the stem cells on top of that. And we grow those cells in a liquid medium that's basically a balanced salt solution supplemented with proteins that the stem cell likes. And then over the next uh, couple of weeks, the stem cells will grow by uh, dividing and making exact copies of themselves and expand from small numbers of cells to these large flat colonies growing on top of the plastic or on top of the feeder cells. And we put those cells in tissue culture dishes that contain 96 wells and then we can do assays where we look at the effects of 96 different growth factors. And if we multiply that as we can very easily, we can screen in um, a week hundreds of thousands of compounds or growth factors to interrogate how those factors affect the differentiation of the stem cell into a specialized cell type. One of the reasons why we don't fully understand why the cells grow differently from one investigator to another is that we don't fully understand all of the factors that are really required for their growth uh, in a laboratory. And understanding really those factors is going to be key to ultimately understanding how to grow the cells in industrial scale and turn them into specialized cells for disease treatment. I think the most exciting thing about embryonic stem cells is that the promise of the field, which was that cells derived from embryonic stem cells would um, be able to treat uh, a variety of human diseases and disorders based on the modeling so far in preclinical models in animal models, a lot of that promise seems to be bearing fruit and a lot of the um, tests that have been done so far really suggest it will work. There's actually a, um, a really exciting, I think, um, interpretation of the work is that the stem cells themselves actually don't necessarily replace the damaged tissue, but they help the endogenous tissue repair. So they keep the cells, for example, in a, in a heart that's been damaged, they keep those cells in that heart from dying and then help that heart repair. The exciting thing about that is that in the long run, you might not need these big production facilities where you're producing cells to ship around the country to treat disease. If you can understand 
the molecular mechanisms by which those donor cells help a heart repair, ultimately you might be able to develop a drug um, to do that. And of course that's much easier to produce in large quantities and to uh, rapidly disseminate to clinics all over the country. So for me one of the exciting things is if we can understand the biology behind it, ultimately we may get past the need for making lots of stem cells to a, a much more refined method of treating human disease.